Hi everybody, welcome to Toolbox Tuesday. Um, this is our second episode and I'm Dr. Jennifer Stelter. So what is Toolbox Tuesday? So Toolbox Tuesday is each week we're going to be coming to you live to offer you and to educate you on different kinds of coping tools and non-pharmacological techniques that people can use for self-care. You might be a healthcare provider who's like a therapist, a social worker, a psychologist, nurse, CNA, looking to build your toolbox to work with patients, maybe or residents that you um, are close with that have mental health concerns, or maybe they have uh, dementia. Maybe you're a caregiver looking for resources because you're taking care of your loved one who had these disease processes. So this show really is for anybody looking for uh, beautiful and optimal brain health, right? When we talk about brain health, we're talking about our emotional, our mental, and our cognitive well-being. Last week, we talked about companion pets. Let me tell you, those are a hit. People were so excited about learning about those companion pets. Uh, it just about went viral. So, so glad that that was helpful to so many. Um, if you're still interested in our companion pets, you can check out our YouTube channel, NeuroEssence, um, to learn more about it, or you can go to our website if you're interested in purchasing one of those companion pets for your toolbox. This week, so excited, we are talking about journaling. I got my journal right here, okay? So, as always, every week we're going to give you the who, what, when, where, why right on the toolbox or the tool itself. We're gonna talk about all those things. Journaling for me, gosh, I remember journaling as a very young girl and have pretty much done it intermittently throughout my life. What a huge difference it is to journal. Um, so let's talk about the who, who can journal. Really anybody can journal. When we talk about um, who is it appropriate for, you know, you have to think about, is this something that you would be interested in? If you hate writing, right, this may not be a tool for you. So again, some of the tools that we talk about for Toolbox Tuesday may or may not resonate with you. Everybody's different, but what's great is being introduced to these tools, try them out, see if you like it, right? Um, for the more of the who, for people who have mental health concerns, really journaling is so beautiful. And we're gonna talk about the why. Um, but I think it's really pertinent for people with anxiety, people who have maybe depression, people who are suffering from nightmares, uh, people who um, just have a lot of thoughts in their head and it's really disturbing them, maybe a lot of worry, things like that, guilt, right? Um, it is powerful for people who have dementia. Um, it would probably be more appropriate for people who are in the earlier stages. Um, possibly moderate if they can still write, but we do know with late stages, it is difficult for those individuals to write. So it may not be an intervention for those people. And really for self-care, um, I really think that journaling on a regular basis can be uh, powerful. So in and of itself, the who is really global. It's for everybody. Uh, the what, okay? Any size, any color, any format, I highly recommend it's one that you can put your pen to your paper, okay? Yes, you may prefer to type on a computer your journal. That's fine, but when we talk about brain health benefits here in a minute, you're actually getting more bang for your buck when you put pen to paper, okay? So I would recommend more of a writing style of a journal rather than typing, but if you're adamant that you wanna do typing, that's gonna be okay too. Um, the, you know, journaling can look different for many people. It doesn't have to be your traditional, I'm sitting here and writing my thoughts and feelings. I think that that's powerful. We're gonna talk about it. That is one of the reasons of the what. Um, but also think about, it could be a format for you to put in your to-do lists. Um, when you're writing down your to-do lists, especially if you're writing them down at night, can really free up space in your mind to relax and be able to go to bed in a way that you feel more refreshed and that you're not disturbed by what do you have to do tomorrow? What do you have to do next week, right? So journaling can be simply to-do list to get it off of your mind on paper so you don't forget or don't worry about forgetting. Um, it could be a targeted question. 
maybe you want to stimulate your brain, you want to ask a question about yourself to dive a little bit deeper into who you are, um, what your goals are, you know, where do you want things to go? So it could be goal directed, you know, or it could be your traditional thoughts and feelings, processing, writing those down. So that's really the what, okay? So journaling comes in all shapes, all sizes. There's no right way to do it. You do it for what works for you. That's what's important. Or if you're using this technique or tool for your patient or your resident, what's gonna work for them? And maybe you trial a few things and then you go for it, right? Let's talk about when do you do it, all right? So could be when you wake up, fresh in the morning, you decide I'm gonna journal. Could be at night before you go to bed, okay? My recommendation is you definitely wanna schedule it. Just like with any tool that you're going to use, especially if it's for self-care, you wanna schedule it because it gets away from us. We say we're gonna do it, we say we're gonna do it, and life gets in the way. So. If you're gonna add journaling to your daily life, I would recommend scheduling it. Is it 6 a.m. right when you get up? Is it 8.30 before you go to bed? Is it on your lunch break? When are you going to do it? So you definitely wanna schedule it. And you can start with literally five minutes a day. Don't make this so overwhelming where you have to commit so much time. Start with five minutes. I tell you that probably you're gonna end up writing more as you get more into it and you feel the benefits, but start with five minutes a day, okay? Where should you journal? I would highly recommend journaling in a place where you have some privacy. Now you might be chuckling. I'm chuckling because I have two small kids. I have a four-year-old and six-year-old. Where in my house do I actually have quiet space? <laughs> Not many places, but it's strategically looking at what are my possibilities. Could it be even just getting into my car in the garage and writing while I'm in my car? Could it be going down to the basement area? You know, So you have to kind of find that for yourself. It might be when you get to your work and you're in your office and you have some time before you get started um, when you're away from your home. So strategically look at where can you do it where you have some quiet time and some quiet space, okay? Now let's talk about the why. So many benefits to journaling. Let's dig in, okay? First thing, and as I mentioned in our first episode, as we as humans respond to stimulation, either in a negative way or a positive way. And I wanna tell you that we all have the ability to respond to stimulation in a positive way. We have to find out which stimulation works for us. But what's beautiful about these tools is that Yes, it processes your thoughts and feelings and um, all those other things, right? Write down your to-do list so you don't forget. Those are great things. But let's talk about all these side benefits that you're getting, right? So number one, tactile stimulation. And this is why I think it's important to put your pen to your paper rather than typing a journal is because there has been benefits that have shown that when you do anything with your hands, more specifically integrated with reading and writing, okay, and that's the combination with journaling, is that you are, again, utilizing this process called neuroplasticity. Now, we talked about this in the first episode that works really well or that system or that process happens when you're using your companion pets. Also happens when you're journaling. What is neuroplasticity? In simplified fashion, you're creating new neural pathways in your brain. When that's occurring, that's great because it's creating a cognitive reserve. So when you really, really need your optimal brain health, it's gonna be there for you when you need it. But what's also occurring is that it increases your concentration and attention, decreases anxiety and fear. So that's why journaling is impactful because you not only are processing your thoughts and feelings or writing your to-do list like I mentioned, but you're receiving that tactile stimulation which is gonna have all those great uplifting benefits to you from a mood perspective, right? So that's wonderful. The other thing is that's visual stimulation. So we're actually exercising our optimal area, right? Our occipital lobe in the back of our uh, brain that we use all the time. And so that's gonna give us the optimal benefit that we're looking for too from visual stimulation. The third thing is gonna do cognitive stimulation. Okay, you're like, what? Journaling, how does that make me think a little bit better, think a little more clear, how does that happen? that's that process of neuroplasticity working there as well. Um, but 
let's take this a, a little bit further, okay? The power of processing your thoughts brings about insight that maybe we didn't have before. I mean, how often do you think about what you think about? We rarely ever do that, but we need to do that. And journaling gives us that platform, that space to be able to do that. It's a constructive way to be able to sit down, and actually think about what we think about, what we feel. As we're doing that, we bring about insights into perspectives that we have, ways that we're acting, relationships, things that work, our successes, our failures. It allows us to bring insights that maybe we didn't take the time to think about before. So that's how wonderful this is for your cognitive health. Um, and as I mentioned, you could do this through to-do lists, thoughts and feelings, or targeted questions that you're pondering. Um, the other thing is that it's going to foster your language ability. So in our brain, we have our language areas, areas in our temporal lobe. And as we are putting pen to paper and we are writing our thoughts fluidly, we are practicing our language abilities. And then usually we reread what we wrote and you're practicing it that way too. So you're exercising your temp a part of your temporal lobe, which houses our language abilities. How great is that? Um, so that's really the cognitive part of it. The other component of it is that it holds us accountable. So there's been lots of research out there that shows that when you say things aloud or you write it down or you tell it to a person, you are kind of adding extra layer of accountability to yourself that you need to follow through. When we just say things to ourselves or keep them inside, there's a less amount of accountability there. And so this is actually going to increase your um, drive and your motivation to accomplish the things that you're wanting to do, if that's what you're writing about. So journaling also helps us, uh, holds us accountable, right? So look at all those whys, right? Tactile stimulation, visual stimulation, cognitive stimulation, right? It's exercising different parts of our brain as we're doing it and holds us accountable, brings us greater insight, right? So journaling is a really powerful tool that you can use. I encourage you, try it. Start five minutes a day, that's it. You could use it to do your to-do list, you could be doing processing thoughts and feelings, you could be targeting a question that you're pondering about yourself. It really can level up your self-care, your brain health, it can also level up what you're doing for your clients, your residents, your patients, if you're looking for new tools as a healthcare provider, or if you're a caregiver taking someone who has mental health concerns, who has dementia, encouraging them to do this, okay? Um, so where can you get these? You can get journals anywhere. You can get them on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Target, wherever. Just pick one up, okay? Any shape, any size, any color, doesn't matter highly recommend journaling. Um, so I appreciate you joining us today. I appreciate Cindy. Thank you so much for joining us. Lainey, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. And all you out there who are watching, join us every Tuesday for Toolbox Tuesday. Now next week, my partner, Jessica Ryan, is going to be joining and talking about essential oils. That is just a great compliment for your toolbox. Um, she's gonna choose one, that's a secret, so you gotta stay tuned next week to find out which essential oil or which regimen she's going to uh, have and work with you on. Um, so please join us next Tuesday. Um, also, if you get a chance, um, I mentioned this last week, we have launched our new subscription uh, toolbox called My Toolbox, and it's really featuring a lot of the things that we're talking about each week. Um, every quarter we're going to be uh, sending you new tools to use, about five to seven tools that you can try for optimal brain health. You could be using this for you, you could be giving it to a gift for somebody else, you might be a healthcare provider wanting to build your toolbox for your clients, and you might be a caregiver looking for resources. That's what this is for. So if you subscribe, every quarter you'll get new tools to try. And if you like them, then you'll contact that company to buy more, right? To continue to fill your toolbox and utilize those resources. Um, so go to our website, neuroessence.org, go to the shop page, click fill my toolbox, 
and there you'll be able to see and read the subscriptions there. So we're super excited about this new um, subscription box that comes to you to take care of your uh, brain health. So check that out if you haven't. And we'll be uploading all of our Toolbox Tuesday episodes on YouTube, so do check us out. We've got a lot of videos there on YouTube. Just uh, search NeuroEssence and you'll be able to see our uh, YouTube videos there too. So thank you guys so much. Have a great week. Uh, if you're in the Chicagoland area, it's, it's getting cold here, so we gotta charge up. We gotta find what's gonna make us happy for winter. If you're in warmer states, God bless, and we'll see you next week. Take care.